Okay, all righty. Okay, well, we're having global praise on Sunday morning live. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Okay. I'm batting a thousand this morning. Praise you, Jesus. And welcome to our global praise on Sunday morning live. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. We hope that you're having as much fun as we are. Amen. We're saved, sanctified, and full of the Holy Ghost, and that's a reason to be happy. Come on. That's a reason to rejoice. Bless the Lord. Excuse me. Glory to God. It's just Jamaican atmosphere. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. But I think uh, global praise was on my mind because we had such an awesome global praise Friday night. If you weren't here, glory to God, you missed an awesome global praise. I think it was the best ever. Bless the Lord. And God really met us. We had uh, people, churches that were online, amen, all the way over in um, Birmingham, England. Bless the Lord. And the Lord just really anointed us. Glory to God. I've heard, I've heard Ernesto say that poem many times before, but never liked Friday night. Oh my goodness. I'm telling you, that was such an anointing. And it just, it, it was so instantaneous and it just flowed right out of her. The Holy Spirit just, just led us right into it. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. And that was a, a resort, uh, a direct uh, response of the grace that she said Regina Heath had poured into her, that great grace amen and she said amen as a result of that grace that she received from her came embrace the grace hallelujah amen god just good he's just good all the time amen he's just good all of the time praise you jesus well you want to go a little bit deeper let's go a little bit further amen. what we're doing now is basically piecemealing the uh caribbean conference study guide for those of you that are viewing by way of television, amen, if you don't have this material that we're talking uh, from today, it's called the image of God. It's a study guide. It's called the image of God. And I want you to go to my faith library online, Mary Banks Faith Library, and you can download it this morning. You can actually go there right now and download this study guide. We're going to be talking about this for a few more weeks, glory to God, because the Lord wants us discipled into this message. We've got to be discipled into it. And I'm excited about that because this is one of the, I think it's the landmark revelation that if we get this in our spirit, the devil doesn't want us to, to, to really comprehend this because if you do, you'll glorify God. You can live holy. Amen. You'll have confidence that you can live holy. As long as the devil have, have you shaky about whether you can live holy or not, amen, more than likely you won't. But if you have confidence in your God that God has fashioned you for holiness, then more than likely you will succeed. I'm excited about it. It's called the Image of God. It's Caribbean Conference 2015. So uh, go there to the website, Mary Banks. I'm waiting for them to put it up on the screen. I haven't seen it yet, glory to God. But uh, our, our sales address is MaryBanksFaithLibrary.com. That's MaryBanksFaithLibrary.com. Go there, and you'll be able to get the study guide, Image of God, from the Caribbean Conference 2015. This is an awesome word. It changed our ministry here. Amen. In Jamaica, I'm taking it to uh, Leesburg. I'm taking uh, Florida. I'm taking it to Fort Lauderdale. Amen. Uh, in a couple of weeks, glory to God. They need this this message, and it's really nothing new. It's just the the understanding of the old. It's an understanding. It's a revelation of the old. Amen. And and it it proves to us that God Himself has has to give us understanding. God has to give us understanding. Glory to God. Can I get this monitor back, please? Amen. 
Now, let's, uh, let's go to chapter 3. We're going into chapter 3 this morning. And every time you come to the house of God for the next few weeks, bring your study guides with you. And if you don't have a study guide, check with the office and uh, ret- retrieve one from them. Amen? We're going into chapter 3, and I want to start... I want to start uh, on page 10, I believe. I just want to make one principle, uh, want to establish one principle in your spirit. I just, I just, as I said, we want to piecemeal this, so I want to take the time to establish uh, line upon line, precept upon precept. Is that all right? You know, we've had a lot of preaching in the church and jumping and shouting and running around and theatrics and whatnot, but it's time for teaching. Isn't that right? It's time for us to come to church and leave knowing something about God. Amen? Knowing something about God. All right, the, for those of you that are viewing, the, the uh, information is on your screen now. The image of God, this study guide is the image of God. You can retrieve it from the Mary Banks Faith Library. Glory to God. And you can go there right now and download it, or you can uh, order you a hard copy of it. You know, everything is digital now. It's quick and easy to download. Isn't that right? Amen. I am in the wrong, I am, I gave you the wrong page number. I'm on page 20, um, I'm going to start at 26, if I may. Page 26. So start taking your notes there. We want to talk about the Godhead. We want to talk about the Godhead today. Our first scripture is taken from 1 John 5 and 7. 1 John 5 and 7. Pastor, for there are three that bear record in heaven: mm-hmm. the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. All right. The word triune. It means three in one. That is the nature of our God. He's a triune being. So just as the Father. Is three in one. He also created man in that fashion. He is Father, Word, Holy Ghost. Isn't that what we just read? Right? He is He is Father, Word, Holy Ghost. So he's a triune being. But throughout the scripture, from Genesis to Revelation, he declares himself to be one. Is that right? He declares himself to be one God, one. So that we don't, we're not talking about three different gods. Amen? We're not talking about three very distinct different personalities even. All right? We're talking about one God. Amen? One God as we are talking about one man. When we talk about man, we, he, when we deal with man, we're dealing with body, soul, and spirit. But it takes all to make the man. Isn't that right? Still just one man. And that's the same way so with God. When he created man, he created man in that fashion. In that fashion, a triune being. That's where our triune nature comes from. However, this, this likeness of man, this likeness of God, extends the, when man was created in the likeness of God. You know, the scripture tells us that back in Genesis. It extends far beyond the simple fact that both the Godhead and man consist of three parts. You know, when we say Father, Word, Holy Ghost, and then we say body, soul, and spirit, that is the extent that sometimes theologians have given to the likeness of of God, man being created in the likeness of God. 
but it goes further than that. Uh, but through Adam, God was has greatly revealed himself. Through Adam, God, God used Adam to reveal some things, you know, to set us on a path. Amen? Not, not the totality, but just a little bit. Just to, It's almost like the law. When, when God gave the law, it, it, it wasn't, um, it was the principles of God, but it was impossible for natural man to walk in those principles. But the law stood as a schoolmaster until Jesus came. So did Adam. He stood as a schoolmaster until the real deal came, until the real man came. All right? We established earlier that the soul is the life of the body. The soul, your soul, is the life of the body. And we discovered that uh, in, earlier in this chapter uh, when we did a chart on the previous page, page uh, 25. You'll see a chart there. Let's look at that. You'll see this chart. Let's go back over it. It makes a distinction between the soul and the body. And I just picked out three attributes here that I think are very defining attributes, defining the distinction between the two. The soul is the real you. That's who you are. That's the inner man. Are you hearing me? The soul is the inner man. That's the one that is going to live forever. The body is going uh, to go back to the dust. It is not going to live forever. This body is going to die one day. And it's going to uh, go back to what it started out being, dust of the earth, ashes and dust. Amen? Amen. So the, the, but the soul will live in eternity somewhere. It will live in heaven or with God, wherever God is, whether he be in heaven or whether he be on the earth. The soul will be with him forever or it will be in hell forever. It will be forever tormented. It will be in hell until hell is, is emptied into the lake of fire. And if the soul is not at peace with God, it will spend eternity in the lake of fire where there will always be torment and gnashing of teeth. Now, unlike the soul, the body now is a tool to express the soul. The body is a house. It's a housing for the soul. Is that right? It's a housing for the soul. And it is, it is what God has given man to express himself. So if you have a soul without a body, you're not able to express yourself. Are, are you working with me? Amen. He has emotions and feelings. The soul has, is the seat of all emotion and feelings. However, the body has no emotions or feelings of itself. The body has absolutely no emotions or feelings. You take the soul out of the flesh, the flesh feels nothing. Amen. Just walk up to a dead man and, and pinch him. He doesn't feel that. Hello. You can kick him. You can burn him. You can do it. He doesn't scream out or yell or say, oh, that hurts. He doesn't say anything, right? Why? Because the emotions are in the soul. And the soul gives feeling to the body. The soul is what supplies feeling, even the sensation of pain. Now, that's contrary to what uh, theologians might teach because they make the body preeminent. Theologians, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, theologians as well as science. Science doesn't have much regard for the soul. Science uh, gives the brain all the credit and the nervous system. But I don't care how good or how well your nervous system is intact, you take the soul out of the body and it still won't feel anything. Come on. You take the soul out and the nervous system is of none effect. Hello? Glory to God. It's of none effect. So it is the soul that controls the feeling Pain. It is, the, it, 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 it is what offers pain, what causes the body to feel pain. If without the soul, the body feels no pain. No emotional pain or physical pain. That's powerful. 
So that tells you that the soul is the real person. Hello? The soul is the real person. Now, that also tells me something else. If we think about that, if the soul is what causes the body to feel physical pain, then that tells us that the soul itself is capable of feeling pain without the body. Hello? The soul can feel pain without the body. Otherwise, hell would not be a place of torment. Hello? Are we, are we following God here? Hell would no longer be a place of torment if the soul could not experience pain. And we think about what God says about people that are going to hell. He says the skin worm never dies. So there's, there's, something, uh, there's, <laughs> there's something about that. Amen. And, and there will be gnashing of teeth. You know, we're talking about souls in hell. Hello? Praise the Lord. So there is, it is possible for the soul to experience pain without the body. And we need to understand that. If it was not so, then the soul would, would never be experiencing any torment. It would never be tormented. However, the body, why, why was the body given to the soul then? Think about that. Why was the body given to the soul? Even God says that, that um, he must be worshipped in spirit and in truth. Glory to God. So what is there a need for, for the soul? Why did man need a soul? Because Adam was created an earthly creature. He was made for the earth. Are you hearing God? Adam was made for the earth, and because he was made for the earth, he had to have a body to express himself or even to, to uh, enjoy, to enjoy planet earth, to, to enjoy the, the smell of, of flowers and, and the feel of grass under his feet and uh, the taste of the fruit and vegetables that God had created for him to eat. He had to have a body in order to experience those things because he was of the earth. Man was created of the earth. Are you, are you working with me? So it was of a necessity that he have a body for this environment. And you notice that his body is termed terrestrial, meaning of the earth. Right? And he says there are celestial bodies. That means that these bodies are heavenly. They're spiritual. But man was, Adam was placed in a terrestrial body, meaning that that body was, it was of the earth for the earth. That's what we need to understand. That body was given to him for this earth, to enjoy this earth. Are you, are you hearing God? Amen. Amen. And finally, the soul is invisible and intangible. It is invisible and intangible. It cannot be seen with the natural eye. Whereas the body is visible and tangible. You can touch. Without the body, there was no touching sensation. There was no sensation of touch or feeling. Are you hearing God? There was none. So God gave, uh, gave man a body to enjoy the things of this earth, the things of this earth, and to interact among themselves, for men to interact among themselves. They, God gave him a body. Are you working with me? So we understand now. I want, you to, I want you to see this as a principle that what is the principle I'm trying to relay here? The principle is that a spiritual creature needs, which, which, which the soul is, the soul is spirit. It was, a, it was a human spirit, but it was indeed a spirit. Is that right? Human because it was made from the elements of this world. However, a spiritual creature needs a body to express himself. Are you hearing God? A spiritual creature needs a body to express himself in an environment called planet Earth. 
If a spiritual creature is going to be here, he needs a body. So, likewise, demons. If they're going to operate here, they need to get into a body. Hello? So they get into bodies. That's why we have so much murder and rape and, 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 and all the evils that we see, glory to God, happening. Why? Because demons have found themselves some bodies. Are you understanding this? They, and, and what do they do in those bodies? They express themselves. They express themselves. I want you to think about this. When Lucifer wanted to express himself in this world, what did he do? He occupied man. He placed his spirit in man. That seed, that seed of iniquity was placed in man. And that's what Jesus said. Jesus said, now you, you're of your father who? And it's whose lust? Whose lust? His lust that you will do. What was, he, what was Jesus saying? Satan has entered your body so that he can express himself. Hello? He has entered your body so that he can express himself. And, and his expression is always has a foundation of lust. Amen. He wants to express himself with lust and iniquity, hatred and chaos and destruction. That's how he, is, he expresses himself. Are you, are you working with God? So spiritual creatures, if they're going to operate in the earth realm, they need a body. Are you with me? Spiritual beings, if they're going to operate in the earth realm, they need a body. Whether they be good or bad, they need a body to express themselves in this realm. In eternity, that's something different. But here, they need a body for expression. For expression. Amen? Are you working with God? Amen. So now we're talking about the triune nature of, man, of, of God. We start there with the Godhead, his triune nature. Let's look at Leviticus, the 26th chapter. This, this book was written by Moses. Sometimes it's just strictly called the book of the law. Leviticus 26, and I think I start at the 11th verse. Mm -hmm. And I will set my tabernacle among you. Now, who is God talking to here? Israel. He's talking to Israel. He's, remember now, they have, they have come up out of Egypt. They're out in the desert. And God has and had instructed them to build this tabernacle in the middle of nowhere. Amen. This thing that that was about two or three million dollars to build in the middle of the desert. And he says, I will set my what? Tabernacle. My tabernacle. What is a tabernacle? It's a dwelling place, right? It's a dwelling place. It's a place for someone to dwell. And God calls it his tabernacle. So it's going to be his dwelling place. Is that right? Amen. Listen to what he says. And my soul shall not abhor you. And my what? My soul. My soul. God has a soul? Mm -hmm. Wow. So, so man having a soul wasn't an afterthought. When God said, let us make him in our image. He himself has a soul. Come on. Amen. When he said, let us make man in our image, glory to God. He, you think he was kind of thorough here? Mm -hmm. And in our likeness. Mm -hmm. Amen. In our likeness. In our image. In our, in our likeness. This tri triune being. 
this triune being called God, the, the creator of all that exists, has a soul. He says, my soul will not hate you. I'm going to set my tabernacle among you. I'm going to set a place up. I'm this, this, this tent that I'm going to ask you to build for me, I'm going to bring my glory down in this tent. Amen? Amen. And my soul shall not hate you. It shall not abhor you. Read the next verse. And I will walk among you. I'm going to walk among you. And will be your God. And ye shall be my people. I'm going to walk among you. How is he going to walk among them? Because watch this now. He, he sets the tabernacle. He says, I'm going to set my tabernacle among you. I'm going to set my tabernacle among you. This, this tabernacle was a tent. Now, in order for God to walk among them, they had to, every time, every time they moved the tent, there's, some, there's a couple of things happened there. He has special people that, to handle certain parts of the tent, right? Certain, certain vessels of the tent, like the mercy seat and the, the Ark of the Covenant. The priests were the only ones allowed to carry that. And, and, um, and the, the, uh, the brazen altar, once God lit that altar from heaven, it stayed lit. So they had to carry that thing full of fire. That thing was, was always burning, it was always burning. Amen. And so when they would pick up everything and move to another location, because every now and then God would, would tell them to move. The cloud would, be, would begin to move or the pillar uh, of fire would begin to move. And they had to pick up and pack up everything and move. And they wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years. First two years and then 38 more years. And every time they moved now, they took the mercy seat with them and the Ark of the Covenant and that that holy of holies, when they set it back up again, the glory of God would come, you know, was there. You know, on that day of atonement, that glory of God showed up in the, in the, in the holy of holies. Are you, are you hearing God? Amen. Amen. So that was his way and, and of being with his people. His glory would come down and hover over the mercy seat. And only, though, only the high priest could go in and stand in the presence of that glory. It was a Shekinah glory. It's called Shekinah. That means it was just brightness, just light, just glorious. Amen. Just glorious. But there was something about that that Jesus said. Jesus made a statement regarding the, the uh, Israelites when they were in the wilderness and when they were up from the time that, that uh, God uh, created Adam up until... Uh, Jesus came on the scene. Jesus made a statement that is very profound. I want us to see it. I think it's in John, the fifth chapter. St. John, the fifth chapter, in the 37th verse. <clears throat> Pastor. John 5, 37. And the Father himself, which hath sent me, mm -hmm. hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Uh-oh. <laughs> Listen to what he's telling them. He's telling them, he's, he's, he's talking to the scribes and Pharisees, remember? Mm -hmm. He's talking to the scribes and Pharisees, and he's saying, he's saying to them, <clears throat> the Father has sent me. And up until now, even though you pride yourself as, as having uh, Moses, because when you talk, when you read up further, he, you know, he brings in, you know, Moses and all those people and, and John the Baptist and all that. And he says, even though you've entertained all of them and you entertain the tabernacle in the wilderness, you entertain the Shekinah glory, but you have never seen God, really. That's what he said. You've never seen his shape. You've never really seen his shape until now. That's what he's saying. 
What you don't understand, that's what he's trying to tell these people. You don't know what you're looking at. The Father has bared witness of who I am and what I am. One of these witnesses that the Father uh, was bearing of Jesus at one time when uh, Philip asked him, show us the Father. Remember? He said, show us the Father. And it was the Father that spoke. It was the Father that spoke through Jesus and said, have I been so long with you and you, you don't know me? It was the Father that said that. So that was a witness as to who Jesus was. You got to connect the dots. That was a witness that you, what you're looking at is the shape of God. This is the form of God that you can relate to. This is a form that God has taken to be tangible. To be able to talk with you. To be able to express himself. No, Jesus kept saying, I came to declare the Father. He wasn't just talking about I came to represent him. I came to declare him. The declaration was Emmanuel. What does that mean? God is with you. Oh, hallelujah. Saints, you got to see this. You got to see this. I'm getting ahead of myself, but you got to see this. Notice, let's hold this and go back to Leviticus now. We're, we're, we're in the Le- Leviticus 26 and 11. He says, I'm going to set my tablet and my knackle among you and my soul. God has a soul, but if he's going to operate here in the earth realm, he needs to express himself. Hello? Look at Judges, 10th chapter, 15th verse. And the children of Israel said unto the Lord, Mm -hmm. We have sinned. Do thou unto us whatsoever seemeth good, Unto thee, deliver us only, we pray thee, this day. Mm -hmm. And they put away the strange gods from among them and served the Lord, and his soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. Oh, you mean God has emotions? You mean the soul of God is expressing an emotion here? He's, He's... He's saying his soul was grieved. Where do we grieve at? In our soul. Oh, come on. Are we looking at this likeness here? Are we seeing this likeness here? Glory to God. His soul was grieved. His soul was grieved. Hallelujah. For the misery that Israel was going through. Why? Because he had determined the misery, that was a recompense for their disobedience. And he had determined so much that they would experience because of their disobedience. But he loved them so much until, you know, he was just like us. You know how we spank our children and we want to cry (laughs) because they're hurting. I used to spank mine and then go off in the room and cry (laughs) because they're crying. Amen. It hurt you to hurt your child. Isn't that right? Even though you know they need it. You know they need a good paddling, but it hurts you to do it. And, and now with me, even if, if, if I could do it, I could, I could put a good paddling on one of mine, but I don't want nobody else to do it. Not even their daddy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You hitting them too hard. You know, whatever. <laughs> you know, glory to God. Some of you mothers like that too. Glory to God. And don't, and don't let them get so bad and, and deserve a paddling from whoever comes along. But boy, whoever comes along better not touch our child. I don't care how bad he is. He, you better not touch him. That's how God was. God loved his people so much until when he had to punish them, he grieved. Listen to what he's saying. He grieved him for their misery. But they were disobedient. And he was punishing them. And he's over there somewhere grieving. He has a soul. He has a soul that can delight and a soul that can be sad 
a soul that can grieve. Are you hearing God? He has a soul. He has a soul. Praise you, Jesus. Are we, are we, are we walking with God this morning? Look at Psalm 11 chapter. Let's establish this. Psalm 11, verse 5. Mm-hmm. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. Okay. For the benefit of the Americans and the English-speaking people that are watching this, violence. <laughs> him that love violence. Um, we kind of include the I, you know. <laughs> Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Violence. Violence. Amen. The Lord tried the righteous. But the wicked and the ones that love violence, he does what? His what hated? So that's where the emotions are. And this is so important because we were made in the likeness of God, right? In the image of God. So now he's saying now, whoa, if, the, if my soul is the seat of my emotions, then guess what? Your soul is the seat of your emotions, if you're made in my likeness. Are, are you hearing? So all this flesh stuff, where's the power of the flesh? It has no power of its own. Are we getting this? The flesh has, the body has absolutely no power of its own within itself. Without a soul, it it cannot express remorse or regret or hatred or joy. It needs a soul. Are you hearing God? I wonder why he didn't say, tell us to cry out, Lord, save my body. You don't even ask God for that. But we do say, save our soul. Lord, just save my soul no matter what happened. Just save my soul. I just want my soul to be saved. Why? Because there's something in us that knows that that's the part that is going into eternity. Amen. That's the part of us. And so I want you to see that this likeness of God goes further than just, okay, two legs, two arms. No. We are a triune being just like our father. Are you hearing God? Amen. We're a triune being. He has a soul where he expresses his emotions. Are you hearing God? Amen. Everything God feels is in his soul. It's in his soul. Everything you feel is in your soul. Everything God desires is in his soul. Everything he desires is where? In his soul. soul. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, God has a soul. Hallelujah. I hope you're getting this. I hope you are really, really, really getting this. Because this is important. Because we have so many false doctrines that we have to deal with. And when you, when you teach the truth from the perspective of the spirit, you start to wonder now, you know, just to throw a little something out there, you begin to narrow the, the coast a bit because there's, getting to be less and less room for dual nature. It's getting to be... It's so... It's getting to be less and less room for dual nature. Because even if you say... Even if you say that the flesh... Now, this is what dual nature teaches. If you say that the flesh has a nature of sin and you say that the spirit has the nature of God talking about a saint now when you're going to give him dual nature right but the Bible teaches that okay you, you gave the, you made the flesh sinful right in dual nature but the Bible teaches that the flesh has no power it has no power of its own So whatever authority, whatever power the soul has is predominant to whatever nature the flesh has, if it had a nature. 
But the nature of the of the flesh is supplied by the spirit, by the soul itself. Are you understanding that? Amen. You have to understand this, saints, because when we talk about the likeness and the image of God, this is this is inclusive. We have to include this. This this is His nature. This is this is the triuneness of God. He's he, and it was illustrated when he when he created Adam. He he tr- he gave us a little glimpse of it. He gave us a glimpse. Not the whole picture, just a glimpse. Adam was just a glimpse at God. It's, it's sort of like when God told Moses, you can't look upon me and live. And so he, had, he put him in the cleft of the mountain and then sh- overshadowed him, you know, so he couldn't see all of God. Well, that's what, that's what Adam is to us. He's just a simple glimpse. It's like, oh, what? What was that? You, you know, you just kind of glimpsed it, but you really couldn't make it out. You know, it, it didn't have, you couldn't make out, it didn't, ha- it didn't have everything that was relative to God in it, in that glimpse. You didn't see everything that was relative to God. Are you understanding me? Glory to God. That's what Adam is to us. All right? Are we learning? Let's go to Jeremiah 6 and 8. Jeremiah 6 and 8. Mm-hmm. Be thou instructed, O Jerusalem. He, he's continuously talking to the children of Israel. Mm-hmm. Lest my soul depart from thee, Ooh. lest I make thee desolate, uh-huh. a land not inhabited. <clears throat> All right, Jerusalem, take instructions, obey my instructions, because if you don't, my soul is going to be upset, and I will refuse to deal with you. I'll depart. I'll leave you on your own. Listen, listen at these emotions God is expressing here. But the thing about it, we've always seen, we've always seen God express emotions. I mean, he walks into places and just destroy everything, kill everything, wipe it out. Jericho just wiped it out. The Amalekites wipe them out. You know, the Philistines wipe them out. We've seen his emotions before. If the, if, 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 this, if an animal touches the mountain, kill him. We've seen his emotions before. We just didn't know where they were coming from. Today we're discovering they're coming out of his soul. <laughs> we're discovering that he has a soul just like we do. Wow. Talk about the image of God. Talk about the image of God. He has a soul. Now let's discover the desire of his soul. You know, what was his desire of his, of his soul relative to us? In one of these scriptures, the, the, the first one, I believe, he said in the 12th verse, what did he say in, in Leviticus 26 and 12? What did he say? I will do what? And I will walk among you. I will do what? Walk. Walk among, among you. Uh huh. And will be your God. And I will be your God. And ye shall be my people. Now this is, um, you know, this is a prophetic word as well as a present word. He was among them in the tabernacle as it related to his Shekinah glory coming, coming down. You know, you know, um, but he wasn't walking. He wasn't walking. He was, just, he was just with them. They were walking, carrying this thing. But God's desire was to walk. Oh, come on. Come on. He's just like that, you know, that baby that's been crawling around and, you know, that, that's lying there, glory to God, on the floor, and, and he's looking at everybody walk, and he can't walk. But he desires to walk. After a while, that child gets up and starts trying to walk. Is that right? Because it's, there's something in him that wants to walk. Hello. There was something in God's soul that wanted to walk among them. And he needed something to walk among them with. Oh, come on. Are you hearing God? He needed something to walk among them because he wanted to experience. Express himself. 
He wants to express himself. He couldn't express himself coming down once a year in the Holy of Holies as a Shekinah glory. Glory to God. Everybody's afraid of him. In fact, the people can't even approach him. Only the high priest, and the high priest was scared too because he had to offer up sacrifice. And if, he, and if something was wrong with one of those sacrifices, he didn't make it out of there. So this is, was not an approachable God. He was not an approachable God. He was not tangible. Hallelujah. But his desire, the desire of his what? The desire of his what? Soul. God's soul desire was to walk, walk among his people. To walk among his people. He tried it in the garden. The Bible said he walked to come down in the garden, walking around in the garden. Glory to God. But it, hallelujah, that was, you, we don't even know what that was. And I know Adam don't even know what it was. Uh, it probably was a voice. <laughs> Adam was hiding from a voice, probably. Amen. Because the scripture says that no man has seen his shape. Mm-mm. But he wanted to walk. He wanted to walk among his people, glory to God, and handle them and 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 be touchable. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Let's see how he fixes this. Look in Hebrews, the first chapter. And I think there's a scripture in Colossians about this. So when we read this, one of you guys find the, find the other one. Because there's two scriptures relative to this that we're about to read now. Um. Hebrews 1, starting at the second and the third verse. Hebrews 1, verse 2. Mm-hmm. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. Who has spoken to us by his son? God. God. So Paul is talking about God. Mm-hmm. Whom he hath appointed here of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Okay, um, whom he had appointed what? Heir, heir of all things. Yes. Okay, who's, who's, who is the heir of all things? Jesus. Jesus Christ. So now we're talking about Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who being the brightness Wait of... Wait a minute, read that last phrase in that, that first, that uh, second verse. By whom also he made the worlds. Okay, wait a minute now. Whoa. You said the heir was Jesus. His son. But this says he also made the world by his son. So whoever this heir is, he was around before the world was. He existed before the world was. Is that right? Ah, the heir of God. Jesus, the heir of God, existed before the world was. That's how he made the worlds. Is that right? Oh, wow. And notice, notice something else here. <laughs> see, 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 God got an answer for science. They want to go with this Big Bang theory. And, and the universe came into existence through a Big Bang of gases. Well, that's not what this says. It didn't say he made the world. He said he made the worlds. Come on, somebody. He made the worlds. He made every planet there is, every universe there is, every solar system there is. Come on. God made them all. Everything that exists, he's saying, I made it. Whether it's the world that you live in or another world. If the Martians are up there on, on a planet somewhere, I made their planet. Come on. I made them all. I made Saturn. I made all of them. Good God Almighty. Come on, somebody. Who are you going to believe? Who are you going to believe? I, pre- I prefer to believe God made the worlds. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because he said so. And he's not a God that he can lie. Amen. He's not a God that lies. Amen. Come on. Now, so Jesus now, this son, this heir, this heir was with him when he made the world. 
And in fact, he used this air, whoever it is, to make the worlds. Read on. Who being the brightness of his glory. Uh oh. Uh oh. He was the brightness of his glory. This air was the brightness of his glory. I can, I, I can see where it was first manifested in our, for us. John said something. John said, Jesus said it too. He said he is the light. Didn't he say that? He said he is the what? He is the light. He's the light. The light. So now God says that he's the brightness of my glory. God is light. And in him is no darkness, right? So this air is his light. Is the light, the brightness of his glory. I saw it manifest when he made the world. He said, let there be. Let there be. And that light came out of the air, which is his air, his air, H-E-I-R. That, that light came from his air who helped him make the worlds by whom he made the worlds. That air was Jesus who said he is the light of the world. Come on, somebody. Y'all hearing God? Are we learning? Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 So we're, 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 we're learning something here. We're learning of the preeminence of Christ. That Jesus was before the world was. Are you working with me? Glory to God. Now watch this here. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. Oh, oh that just knocks us out. That just, that, that's just it. That's the other nail. That's the last nail in the coffin right there. He is the express. What does that mean? He is the express, exact, exact expression. It's the root of expression. He is the exact expression of God. He is the shape of God. Are you hearing? He is the shape of God. He is the soul of God placed in a body. Someone said, I think it was Jesus. In the form of the word. A body thou has prepared me. <laughs> huh? It was the word that was made. And the word. That part of the Godhead. That is one with God. So, if the word was made flesh, and it is the express image of God, then it means that the word, well, let's go here. Let me let you determine. You answer this, okay? You you think about this. 
where do I where do I see God's likes? His lacks, his lacks, likes and dislikes. Where? How do I know what God likes? How do I know what he dislikes? How do I know what God feels? How do I know what he what he hates? What I well, how do what do I know? What tells me that thing that causes him to grieve? So the the word then apparently well let's let's let me ask you this. where do I see his emotions? What did I just what did what, how did I know God grieved about Israel? How do I know that he was miserable? What told me that? It's found where? So the word is his soul. That's the expression of God. The word is an expression of who God is. You don't know God except through his word. You don't know anything about him except you read his word. Is that right? We know nothing of our father except we read the word of God. So now it was the word that was made what? Flesh. It was the word that was given a body. It was the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with and the word was God. So God was made flesh. Oh, come on, somebody. So he took that expressive part of him. Oh, come on now. He took that part of that part that housed all of his likes, his dislikes, and all of his emotions and his desires and his loves and his hates and all of those things. Everything that is about him, he put it in a body and put a name of it called Jesus. He put a name on it, called it Jesus, the soul of God manifested in the earth. Oh my goodness, 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 goodness. And then Jesus comes and he's and the scripture says Jesus had a soul. <laughs> Cuz it was his soul that went to hell. Thou shall not leave my soul in hell. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. We're talking about our father now. So here, here now we have the express image of God. But God told us something here. He said that this, this heir here, who is Jesus Christ, we come to know him as Jesus Christ, made the worlds. So he was in existence before the foundation of the world. And guess what? He was in existence before the foundation of the world. That means that this man, Jesus, that's the real man. Adam was a facsimile of a man. I say Adam was a facsimile of a man. That's why the scripture calls Jesus the son of man and son of God. This son of God, the, the, the fact that he was a son of man was simply that he had on that body, that human body. But he was the son of God because God dwelt in that body. God lived in that body. Hallelujah. Watch this. Glory to God. Watch this now. Are we learning? Let's go to Philippians then. There was a scripture over in Colossians too. I wanted. Did anybody find that one about his image? Lord God, well, why are you trying to find that one? I'm going to go to Philippians here. I'm going to see if I can find Philippians in my Bible. Look at this. Philippians two. Let's 
listen, listen to this, 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 uh, this image of God. Now, before we go any further, let's connect the dots here. Okay? I don't want you to. I don't want to lose. Don't want you to lose sight of these. Let's connect these dots. If Jesus is the express image of God, that's what the scripture just told us, right? He, and it says he's the express image of God's personage, his person. This is what he looks like in the earth realm. When he, come on. When he comes to earth, this is what he looks like. This is the body, this is the shape, this is the form that he decided to take to come to the earth. If I'm going to the earth, this is what I want to look like. But he made that decision way back in eternity past, right? He made that decision and made his shape and his form before he made the world. Because Jesus' testimony in the 8th chapter of Proverbs was that he played in the presence of the Father. He was, he, delight, he was always with the Father, and he, the Father delighted in him. Are you hearing? Are you hearing? Amen. So he existed, this form, I want you to understand, this form existed. You know how I know it existed? You know how we know also that, it, 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 that the form of God, which is Jesus Christ, existed before the world was because the scriptures say we were found in him before the world was. So he had to exist before the world was ever made. And he existed as the son of God. Even John said, John said, I looked, uh, in the, I think it was the fifth chapter of, of Revelations, he said, he looked and he saw a lamb that, that, that looked as if it had been slain before the foundations of the world. So, glory to God, time was just a place to live out. To live out that thing that was in God. This whole scenario was in God. There's nothing that exists today that wasn't in God. Are you understanding? That wasn't in God. He, this, this whole scenario, everything is, is playing out. It's playing out in time now. It's already played out in eternity, in the mind of God. Come on, somebody. It already played out in the mind of God, and God is directing things, and he's orchestrating things, and nobody can stop him. Glory to God. I was sitting down at, the, at my dressing table this morning uh, and, and, and looked down, and here's a bunch of ants. They're just running around, down, just running around, little sugar ants. You know those little sugar ants? They're just running around, wreaking havoc. And I called to God. I call, I call for a God, a God named Colleen, Ka Ka Colleen, Le uh, Colleen Peart. And God took her, her rod in her hand, <laughs> called a broom, <laughs> and swept those ants out. And I looked at her, I said, you're their God. <laughs> you, you destroyed them, <laughs> glory to God, with a swipe of a broom. They're gone, you know. And I said, flush him down the toilet. And the ant god took, <laughs> took them and flushed them down the toilet. And they are no more. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. Amen. And, and I, I said to Colleen, I said, now that's what we look like to God. Amen. God can just, God can just do away with us at any moment, at any time. He said, we look like grasshoppers to him. Amen. So he can, he can do anything he wants. We do, we, we think we're in control. God says, oh, my God, don't you realize that the earth is my footstool? Yeah. Hallelujah. So I got to make myself tangible. I got to make myself visible to you. You can't even entertain me. I want to walk among you. I want to walk among you. I want to be with you. Are you hearing God? Are you hearing God? So look at what he says here in Philippians, the second chapter here. Oh, my time's almost up. Look, look, look here. Uh, look in the second chapter and the fifth verse. Philippians 2 and 5. Let this mind be in you, mm -hmm. which was also in Christ Jesus. Okay. Who being 
in the form of God. Uh oh. Notice, let's connect these dots here from this first this first verse he read, the fifth verse and the sixth verse. You got to connect it here. Notice what he said in the fifth verse. Let the mind that was that was in who? Christ. That let that mind that was being you that was also in who? Christ. Christ Jesus. So he's the subject matter here. Mm-hmm. He's the subject matter. That mind that was in Christ Jesus. Who? Who is the who here? Jesus was first found in the form of God. Watch this dot here. Watch these, this connection here. Let the mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, colon. I'm, exp- I'm giving an explanation here. Who, being in the form of God. All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, Hallelujah. Look at him, look at him. He's saying, in the, who being in the form of God, one of the things I taught in, in uh, Rightly Dividing the Word is that you can read a verse of Scripture and there might be three phrases in that one verse and they may span over a whole two or 3,000 years of history in the Bible from one phrase to the other. That's what's going on here. This, this, what this is saying is Jesus Christ, he made Jesus the subject, right? He was in the form of God. He started out in the, hallelujah, being in the form of God, being the, in the body that God chose for him to get in. This is the form that God chose, this mm-hmm. body that Jesus is in, this body that's touchable, tangible, that, that Peter laid, it, laid in his bosom. Peter, John, John laid over in, in Christ's bosom. He said, this body, this is the form of God. But, watch this. Let me, watch what he says here. This is what, what makes it so powerful. Read on. Thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now, what is he saying here? Even though I'm in a human body, this is Jesus. I'm in a human body. I am. I have never dwelt like this. Because this body is even lower than the angels. It's even lower than the angels. Had to become lower than the angels in order for me to die. So I had to get in something that was totally beneath me. First of all, it's definitely beneath the Godhead. Thirdly, it's beneath the angels. Hello. But I have to remain equal with God. I have to allow God, my Father, to express himself in this body. I have to remain obedient, equal with God. In other words, I cannot interfere with what he wants to do. In the earth realm. Hallelujah. I've got to allow him. I've got to be obedient to my father. He created me for this purpose. I'm the last Adam that was before Adam. (laughs) Hallelujah. I am the last Adam that was before Adam. Now, this is what I want you to see. Before I go any further, let me just inject something here because I've got ahead of myself here. Jesus being in the image of God, being the express personage of God, existing before the world was. When God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness, he was talking about Adam, right? (laughs) Right? He's talking about Adam. However... He had the blueprint already made. So the image was Christ who existed before Adam, who existed before the world. So when God said, let us make man in our own image, the image that he, that he made Adam in was the image of Jesus Christ. Do so you see this? It was the image of Jesus who was already in existence. That Adam just kind of looked like the form of God. That's the form that God was going to take. So he made him a man in that likeness. Yeah. 
Do you understand that? Jesus was the form of God. Jesus was the shape of God. Jesus was the express personage of God. So this person called Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. So, so God's now talking with the determinate counsel, Father, Word, Holy Ghost, said, let us make him in our image. So what is our image? Word, that image that, you take, that you're going to come to earth in, called Jesus, let's make him in that image. That's our image. That's our form. That's the form that we take when we go into the earth realm. Oh, come on. We're going to walk to earth for 2,000 years. Glory to God, 2,000 years in that form. Let's, let's, uh, uh, after the first, first 5,000 years, first 4,000 years, we're going to go to earth in that form. In that form. So let us, let us, let us make a man that looks like that. Because that form that we're going to take has eyes, it has ears, it has hands, it has feet. It can walk. It can walk. Glory to God. So let's make a man in that shape. Let's give him that shape. Hallelujah. And once again, he made Adam and then Eve. Not Adam and Steve. Hello. I just thought I'd say that. Praise you, Jesus. He made him in the image of God. Man, you are a awesome creature. You are so awesome. We came out of you. Hallelujah. So you are awesome. Look what you produced. <laughs> look what came out of you. Come on. Look what came out of you. Glory to God. Amen. You are an awesome creature. You were made in the image of Jesus Christ. You're made in the image of Jesus Christ. You were made in the image of Jesus Christ. Adam was made in the image of Christ. And now you are the image of Christ. You're the express image of his personage. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's, let's just connect these dots. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm winding up. I'm winding up. Glory to God. I'm coming down. Amen. So are we connecting the dots now? We see that Adam was made in the image of Jesus Christ. So therefore, in the, in the book of Corinthians, the 15th chapter, when it's in the 46th verse, when it says, how be it that was, how be it that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterwards that which is spiritual, hmm? what is it referring to? It is referring to the fact that in time, on the earth, Adam was first. But in eternity, Jesus existed before Adam. Come on, are you working with me? In fact, Adam's design is that of Christ. He was designed to look like Christ. Are you hearing me? In the image of, of Christ. Hallelujah. Are we, are we good here? Amen. Now notice this. What, he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. In other words, to allow God to do what God wants to do with this body, to be obedient, to remain in the character of God, to remain true to the will of the Father, to always constantly be in the, in the, the will of the Father. So allow this body to be God. That's what equal means. Let this body be God. Let this body be the, the expression of the Father. That's why he continuously said, I didn't come to do my own will. I didn't come to speak my own words. I didn't come to do my own thing. The words that I speak, they are the Father's. The deeds that I do, the work is done by the Father. Do you understand that? So he was constantly equal with the Father. He never asserted his own will. Hello? He never asserted his own will. He was equal with the Father. Everything you saw him do was the Father's will. That's how we're supposed to live. Everything that people see us do, it should be the will of the will of God. It should be the will of God. We should not do anything that's not the will of God. Are you understanding? Amen. Amen. Jesus was our example. Bless the Lord. Read on. But made himself of mm -hmm. no reputation mm -hmm. and took upon him the form of a servant. Mm -hmm. 
and was made in the likeness of men. I'm going to explain this. This is made in the likeness of men. So it sounds as if that Adam was first and then Jesus. But that's that's really not what it's saying here. It's saying that he was manifested. He was manifested in the in the likeness of men in that he had a human body. That's what he's saying. He had a human body. All right? Glory to God. Read on. And being found in fashion as a man. Being found in fashion. His shape. His form was that of a man. Whose form? God. God's form was that of a man. That's what he chose. Hallelujah. That's what he wanted to look like. So guys, you ought to do, oof, you ought to raise your hand and tell God thank you. You're actually in his image. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He wanted to have he wanted to have the form of a man. And that was not an afterthought. That wasn't after he made man and then decided I want to look like that. No. He, he made his form and then made man look like his form. Amen. It was just manifested in time after the fact. Are you, are you working with me? Being found in the fashion of a man, humbling himself, even unto death. He had to humble himself because he was the Lord of all glory. Jesus said, if I need help, you know, I call my father and he sent 12 legions of angels. Glory to God. I could wipe everything in here out. You think I can't come down off this cross? If I wanted to, I could, but I, I was created for this. I was created for this. Are you hearing God? Amen. Are you hearing God? Amen. So do we see now that Jesus Christ is the form of God? Jesus Christ is the expression of God. Jesus Christ is the soul of God expressed in the earth realm. Clap your hands and tell him thank you. Come on, we can do better than that. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Dr. Leverett. Are we blessed? Yeah. <laughs> Glory to God. I hope you that are watching by way of television, I hope that you have been blessed today. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I pray that you have been blessed and um, that you learn something today. I pray that you really learn something today. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to be piecemealing this word probably over the next few weeks. We're going to look at it. We're going to take it apart. Glory to God. And we're going to look at it line upon line, precept upon precept, and make sure that it's discipled into every one of us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's give God a great applaud in this house. Hallelujah. Man, it's like conference has continued, you know. Awesome, awesome, awesome word just quickening us as you, as you shared, uh, Dr. Banks, you know. And all of us need to be at that place. We are going to realize that we are the expressed image of the Father. Amen? Amen. Amen. And you know what? We don't want to leave anybody behind. You know, I, I this morning woke up, was speaking with Carlene and... You know, there's just this thing in our heart that we just want for everybody to be at that place where God wants us to be. You know, you can get the understanding, but having the understanding without the application, it is of no benefit to us. Amen? Amen. And, and, and sometimes there are some things that work against us, and we just need to be real with God. You know, beautiful message. The Lord just sat with us. You know, like we're in a little garden, and it's just cool and nice and comfortable, and we're just relaxed. And the Lord is talking to us almost like it's individually. Hey, me and you talking. It's us talking, and we're receiving from him, you know. But there may be some today that have not dealt the way we need to deal with the word of God. We're not, we've not received it and handled it the way that we should, you know. And there's this concern in, in our hearts that some of us might have not yet renounced the hidden things of dishonesty so we can move on with God. There are some of us who are not real 
with our life. There are some of us who are just not decided to completely live holy, you know, and God is saying you will get left. You know, they, uh, I think last Wednesday I heard Doc talking about that line of demarcation becoming even more prominent. You know, you can see the deepening of the line, the realness of the line. You know, let's not make any assumptions because God does not intend or want to leave anybody behind. But we can lag behind and get left behind. And because you're seeing it and understanding it, it doesn't mean that you're a part of it. You have to embrace it. You know, so just seeing it and understanding it doesn't mean that everything is okay. We have to walk it. We have to be doers of the word. Everything that comes out of God. You know, I'm excited. I'm really, really excited by what God is doing. How he's encouraged us today. Anybody feel encouraged? Just very encouraged. My God, I'm, I'm just so encouraged. When you sit for a number of years and some of you just coming in and you, you sit and you see God. You see, you know, those, those, those um, like the, the, the onion, things being peeled off and peeled off and peeled off and the word of God just coming out. Like it's jumping in your face in a way like you've never experienced it before. That is precious. That is precious for God to reveal the treasures which are hid in Christ. You know, in Colossians, in, that, in Colossians, he talks about all the treasures of knowledge and wisdom being hidden in Christ. And he revealed that to an apostle that brings that to us. Treasures, God's tre That's just awesome. That's just awesome. We cannot trample on that. You know, we cannot, we cannot take that lightly. You know? So if there's anybody in the house, yes, we're going to move on. And we're moving on with God. And God is picking up speed. Anybody realize that? You know, that he's picking up speed. You know, and, 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 and I just think of a lot of things, you know. When God speak, God speak. And he said that we need to rehearse some things. You know, don't make anything slip. So God talked about BTB. And God talked about the gifts and the talents that he's impacted all of us inside here with. Some of us have made commitment of our time. Some of, of, of us, have, we've made commitment of the, the gifts and talents that need to be utilized now, you know. But some of us are still in that place where we've not given up our will. You know, we're just doing what we think is what we should do, you know. Not necessarily for God, you know, but for ourselves. And we need to examine ourselves. I want us to just be reflective for a little while to examine ourselves. God is, is pouring out himself to us. God is causing Christ to be formed in us. You know, is there a hindrance anywhere? Is there a hindrance anywhere? You know, some of us know where we are. And some of us, we've been trying to reach you. Some of us, we want to make time to get to you. But God is getting to you. God has been dealing with your heart. And today, you know, if you're not saved or you've not, you've not come into God all the way, we're going to give you that opportunity to do so. Amen. You know, we want you to rejoice. But we want you to rejoice from a place where you know you're worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. That this is not a part of a show. You know, because we can be right here and, and just be lost. You know, in the middle of all of this, we can hear all of this, make all kinds of assumptions, and then be lost. So I think God wants to just give us a, an opportunity. If you're not saved, or you allow yourself to be struggling, or you're struggling, however you want to put it, and you think that you need some strength from the Lord, Come and let us talk to him together. Come and let us talk to him together. And you know what? When God is speaking, don't double think. Don't make any shadows come. Don't let any shadow of turning um, cause you not to come and to do what you need to do. You know, because there, there is no shame in this. This is just an awesome time of God shaping and making and, and moving us. Amen. So if there's anybody here that God is speaking to your heart, just come to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll be a living Yes, 
Sunday after Sunday, meeting after meeting, it's because he's trying to rescue some of us. God is trying to rescue some of us. Let's not trample on his mercy. Let's not frustrate his mercy. Let's not frustrate his grace. You know, we're not going to be deliberating a whole lot, but if you know God is speaking to you, this is just your opportunity to just come to him. Come to him and be real. Come to him and pour out everything. Is there one more? and those who know that they needed to be at the altar but didn't feel, didn't feel the courage to come want you to just talk to God from where you are God will hear if it's coming from a sincere heart if it's coming from a heart which is broken and contrite and a heart that really needs this help badly and we're going to be praying with you as well. But we want you to talk to God from your own heart. He wants to hear you. His soul wants to hear your soul talking to him this morning. Right in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you today. We bless you so much for your word, Lord. We bless you, Lord, that we can feel your soul, God. We bless you, Lord, that you are just so concerned about us, oh God, that you will not want one to slip through any crack in this place, Lord Jesus. And this morning, Lord, we just exalt you, God. Father, we exalt you, Jesus. We give you the preeminence in this place, oh God. We thank you for coming to see about us. We thank you, God, for your encouragement, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that everything that we need is inside of you, Lord. We thank you, O oh God, for placing our souls at a safe place, in a holy place, on holy ground, O oh God, inside of the Holy Ghost where we live and move and have our being, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word today. We thank you for the clarity of your word, Lord God. And Father, we ask, oh God, if there is anything that is in any of us, Lord, right now, oh God, we ask you, oh God, to just deal with it, Lord. Any spot, Lord, any sin, Lord, any shakiness, Lord God, any shadow of turning, Lord God, that is inside of our hearts, oh God, help us to deal and be real, Lord. Father, help those of us at the altar today, Lord. Lord, have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord Jesus. Father, we look on, Lord, and it is our desire, it's your desire that everybody in this place make it into heaven. Oh, God, but we cannot be presumptuous, Lord. So, Father, we ask that you will melt hearts today, Lord. That you will break hearts today, Lord. That you will cause us to produce humility, Lord Jesus. That we will be real with you, God. 
Father, have mercy on all of us, Lord. Meet us at your point of need, Lord. Father, there are those in the house that are unsaved, Lord. And Lord, even though you call, Lord, we've not moved, Lord. But Father, we ask for mercy, Lord Jesus. That even in their seats, oh God, you will visit them, Lord. Even on their way home, oh God, you will visit them, Lord. Even in the homes, Lord, you will visit, Lord. Bring salvation, Lord Jesus. Bring salvation to our homes and to our workplaces, Lord. Help us, oh God. Help us, Jesus. Help us, oh God, to not resist you anymore, Lord God. Because we will not know when you will say that's it, Lord Jesus. Help us to know that truly we could become reprobates if we resist you, Lord God. Help us, Lord God. Help us, Lord, to surrender all to you. Everything to you, Lord Jesus. Everything to you, Lord. Get glory out of our lives. Get glory out of our lives, Lord. Let us be that express image to this world, Lord. Let us be that light to this dark world, Lord. This dying world, Lord. This dark church, Lord. This dying church that you are raising, you are raising up, Lord Jesus. May we be counted worthy, Lord, to have received this word, God. May we be counted worthy. May we be counted worthy. May we be counted worthy, Lord. May we handle your word the way you expect us to handle it. To bring glory to you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We are thankful people. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. 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 We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Hariyadabasa. Yes, Lord. With thanks. a real testimony
Jesus. to say this, saints. As Pastor was saying, the line of demarcation has been drawn deeper in the sand. It's so easy to cross that line with God. We cannot continuously come to church and not change. I was sitting talking with the young ministers and I was sharing with them and Pam how I have been moved into that fear and trembling because of all the millions of people in the world, Christians, true Christians, God chose us this revelation we don't hear these things preached on television we don't hear them preached in the local churches the revelation of the mystery of Christ and the reason we don't is because of apostolic order God is raising up real apostles like unto myself and he's giving us a revelation of the truth. But with that revelation comes tremendous responsibility. When God gives us truth, we are accountable for it. We got to live holy. We got to live holy, saints. This, the, the time is over for vacillating in and out. In the spirit, out the spirit. In the spirit, out the spirit. In the spirit, out the spirit. That day is over. We got to be holy. Simple as that. We got to be holy. We, we got to practice what we preach. We've been given much and we can pat ourselves on the back and, 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 and you know, boy, Bible teaches us a word church. It's a word church. And boy, when, you, when, when we go to church, we, we hear the word. We hear the truth. Doc can really teach. Doc can do this. Doc can do this. That's no good if we don't walk in it. It's no good if I don't walk in it. I've got to walk in this. It, I, the same thing it takes for you to get there, it takes for me. And if I preach this stuff and I don't walk in it, I'm going to hell. I'm going to hell, saints. God is not a respecter of persons. There's no, there's no cutting slack for, 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 for ministers. In fact, we get more punishment. We got to walk in this, saints. We got to love one another with the love of Christ. We got to be equal with God in our character. We got to be equal with God in our disposition, our wants and our likes and our dislikes. We got to be equal with God in our will, what we will to do. It's got to be God's will. So God is saying now, put a check mark by this day, because I'm warning you. I'm warning you. To whom much is given, much is required. This is not given to us so we can pat ourselves on the back and say, we know more than the next church, or we know more than this leader or that leader. That's foolishness. That's not what this is all about. This is not something for us to just brag on and say we, we got a word, we, we get a word. It's not about that. <clears throat> it's about letting men and women see the image of God in us. To see our God walking the earth again in us. 
just like they saw him in Jesus. And we ought to thank God that we're in a church that doesn't take that for granted. That we don't take knowledge for granted. That we're not here just for knowledge. And it's not enough to live like the devil and then come to the church and repent and then go back home and live like the devil and then come to the church and repent and then go on your job and live like the devil and then come to the church and repent. God says, stop that. He says, stop it. Stop it. I Hallelujah. I expect to do great and marvelous things in this nation. I expect to raise up a people that can go out to the uttermost parts of the world and carry this gospel the Lord working with them but you gotta be holy God is not impressed with anything except holiness the only thing that impresses God is God nothing else impresses him are we understanding that? are we understanding that? I want to raise God up a people you know what? You know what, Cynthia? I'm going to do what God tells me to do. I'm going to do it, Doc. I'm going to do what God tells me to do. And then no, there's no power on earth, under the earth, in the earth that can stop me from doing what God tells me to do. None. 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 No weapon raised against a movement of God can prosper. No weapon. No one can stop this move of God. It's too late now. It's too late. We know too much. Who's going to stop us? Who? Who? What power? What power can stop you when you obey God? Who? Nobody can stop the move of God. When God starts moving, you better get out of his way. I'm going to obey God. I'm going to obey God. I'm going to obey God. Now, this is something God told me to tell you. You do it if you want to do it. You don't have to if you don't want to. But God said, cut loose. Cut soulish ties with everything that's not like him. He said, cut it loose. If it does not glorify him, cut it loose. You got soulish ties. Your soul is tied to folk, people, things, wants. He said, cut it. There's some people you talk to you shouldn't even be talking to. People you hang out with you shouldn't even hang out with. People you're on the phone with you shouldn't even be on the phone with. Some of you are holding on to people that, that God has even rejected. And you can't even move yourself. You can't, you can't go forward. You can't, you can't do. Why? Because you're trying to, you, tr you got your hand on the gospel plow, trying to plow, and one hand holding back to something that God has refused. He said, let it go. Move forward. Move forward. Now, I'm going to warn you, I'm telling you, because sometimes... See, sometimes, Pastor, sometimes people think that when you give them a warning, especially about cutting soulish ties and whatnot, they think that, well, that's just your opinion. See, see, I don't give vain warnings. I don't, I don't, I don't do that. If I, if I tell you God said something, write it down. It's coming to pass. It's coming to pass. Dr. Leverage, come here, Dr. Leverage. Dr. Leverage and his wife, and I believe Pastor Sam and Pastor Glenn were sitting in my, my, my bedroom. And in the middle of a conversation we were having about this word, 
Out of my mouth came, God said he's going to judge so-and-so, so-and-so. Just, I don't know. I didn't even know where it came from. I know it came from God, but it just, remember? We weren't talking about that person, but God said it. God said, I'm going to judge that person. And a few days later, that person was dead. That's just been recently. That was only, what, two, two, three months ago? Approximately three months ago. That person died a few days later. And I was sitting there. And God says some of his people are holding on to soulish ties. You got your soul tied to other folk. That God is God has said, loose these people. Loose them so you can go forward. They're not good for you. He's trying to take you on and you're and you're back there, glory to God. Some of you young people are holding on to, to folks out there in the streets that you need to let go of so that you can move in God. Because let me tell you, there's just as many short graves as there are long graves. You can die very young. And some of you older people, get off the phone talking foolishness. Just get off the phone talking foolishness. Talk about those things that edify and build you up. Stop talking about people. And let me, let me, let me, let me, I, I don't like, I don't like to, I don't like to do this, but I'm going to do it because God ordered me to. I'm going to do it because he ordered me to. I remember, um, hallelujah. I remember Moses was um, out in the wilderness and Korah and all those people came up against him, you know, and they had influence among the Israelites and it was 250 of them led by Korah and those. And I remember Moses standing there and he said, if these men die a natural death, then God didn't call me to do what I'm doing. Let me let me let me let me say this, saints. Just because God told me to warn you. Anybody that's been coming to Bible teachers knows. This is not your ordinary church. It's not an ordinary church. This is not your run-of-the-mill theatrics, yell and scream and, and, and say nothing church. This is where you come to hear from God. You walk through those doors there, God got a word for you. Not me, God. Don't speak against that. Don't speak against that. And don't listen to people that speak against that. When you come through those doors, there's an anointing in here called God. People get saved in here. The word is potent in here. God speaks to us in here. I get edified in here. God can put up one of these young people and they lift our spirit. Just to let you know he working with you. Don't speak against that. Hold your peace. Don't let people draw you into negative things about your ministry because this is God's influence in this nation that's what Bible teaches is it's God's influence in this nation I was asking the Lord the other day how long do you want me here he hasn't answered me yet he hasn't answered me yet and I said well how, you know how long you want me here But I do know I'm going to occupy 
and do what he told me to do. Because I see God moving in your nation. He's moving. There's something powerful going on in here. There's something powerful going on. That's why it's mandatory. That's why I said, East Kingston, get here. Trenchtown, get here. Because there's, there's a move of God going on right now. Don't talk against that. Don't let people draw you into conversation. Stop with the, the, you know, the petty criticisms and this and that. Glory to God. Amen. There's always going to be something ain't right. Anywhere you go, there's going to be something that's not right. But know that God is here. You came to hear from God. Amen. And if you sit side somebody that won't that that that's talking and 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 distracting, just tell them, please, please, I'm trying to hear the word. Please, shh, shh, I'm trying to hear the word. Do y'all understand? This is God. He's moving in here. He's moving. Can't you feel him moving? He's moving in here. He's moving in here. He's moving. And he does not want us, he does not want us to speak against that. Don't speak against that. Don't let people get you into conversations, negative conversations about the ministry because this is God's influence. This is God's, this had nothing to do with Mary Banks. This is God's influence because God said he was going to go in and he was going to get the best and bring them here for us to train. He said, I'm going to give you the best for you to train. Train to serve him. Train to, and I'm not, that doesn't knock any other pastor. I love my brothers in the Lord. I love my sisters that minister the gospel in the Lord Jesus Christ. I love them, but I got to do what God told me to do. I got to do what he told me to do. And I want a people that can walk with me. And you can't walk with me if you're not going to be holy. You can't walk with me if you're not going to regard God. You can't walk with me, glory to God, if you're living a lifestyle of sin. You, we can't walk together except we agree. So let's agree to be holy. Come on, saints. Isn't it, doesn't it feel good just to be holy? It feels good to be holy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let the devil know you done had your time in my life. You can't hold me now. Come on, let the devil know you can't hold me now. I'm going on with God. You done had your time. This God's time. Come on, this is God's time. And we're going on with God. Hallelujah. 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 We're on God's heart and mind, saints. I mean, the Lord just paused. Just paused to warn us, you know. And... As Doc was speaking, I could see some of us, our feet on that line, and God is just trying, that line of demarcation, God is just trying to pull some of us back, you know, so guys, hear God, let us hear God, some of us, those phone calls, you know, whether they be local, whether they be international, whether people calling you from here or yonder, some of us need to just stop, just cut off completely, I mean, completely, completely, completely. You know, you've 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 not been you've not been developed by any of those calls. You've been drawn back every time you move a little forward. You you feel pulled back by some of those conversations. You know, let, let let's get real, let's get real and and let's just try to please God. Let's be holy. You know, let's let's be holy. He's compacted us to be holy. You know, God God is us very 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 awesome, and He cares about every single one of us in here. Did you feel His soul a while ago? Did you feel the passion in his soul? Hallelujah. Did you feel it? You know, so it's about time we stop watching what people think about us. You know, what people may have to say about us. You know, all of that don't matter. You know what the world is doing with us. All of that won't matter. It doesn't matter now and it won't matter later on. Let's not just press on into God. Let's press on. Let's love each other. Let's love the word of God and embrace it. And it's going to cost us. One of the things that we learned last, last the, the conference, we, we have to suffer to glorify him. So if people are going to talk bad about you after you stop talking to them, that's fine. Suffer, that's just a, a mild form of suffering. Just mild humiliation. Don't worry about that. Let's just move forward. Let, let's just move forward. Guys, let's move forward. Let's move forward. I, I, I fear for some of us, you know, I'm looking around and just thinking about some of us, and I fear. 
Afraid, meaning afraid that you're going to end up in hell. Just afraid. You know, because God cannot come to us saying the same thing over and over and over and over again. And you think flesh talking to you every time. Every time you get counted, you think it's flesh talking to you. You know, that, that, that's, that, that, that's a bad, bad, bad place to be. You know, let's hear God and let's heed the, the call and the warning of God. Let's hear, and you know, some time ago, Doc said that the days of Ananias and Sapphira is here. Has to be. Has to be. Because of the kind of treasure that is falling out of heaven right in this place. Amen. Amen. Is everybody all right? Everybody all right? Let us stand up and applaud him. Let's give him a standing ovation. Hallelujah. Woo, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell him something lovely. Hallelujah. Awesome God. Great God. Awesome. Wonderful. Woo, Jesus. Incomparable. Woo, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. We are preparing to collect the offering. We're trying to collect the offering. Hallelujah. But you know what? What we're going to ask you to do, even in giving the offering, can this be a time of real worship? Can we not think that it's time to gather in a corner and say something or gather in a corner and talk or distract others? Can this be real worship unto the Lord as well? Amen. So I want for, because God, I, I don't even know if God is finished, finished, finished yet.